Aloha! Welcome to this video. So this video we're going to be finishing up my War Club Macau or fish hook. Um, so in the last video was two weeks ago. Um, I didn't wasn't able to push it out this last week. I uh, wasn't quite finished with it and it was the 4th of July. Um, so this week I'm going to be finishing up. So there's a couple of things I have left to do to it. Um, obviously one is shaping. I've only cut out the rough exterior. In addition to that, I'm also going to be putting in some inlays. Uh, I decided, I was kind of debating on how I wanted to do my inlays. I decided to do dots, so large circular dots that will get uh, start out large and then get progressively smaller. And I'm actually not going to be putting any shark teeth on this piece. So I almost, I'd say 95% of the pieces that I make that I make have shark teeth on them. Um, because of the design and layout and overall aesthetic of this piece, I didn't want to put shark teeth on it. Um, I thought it would kind of just detract from what I want to be the focus, and that's just the overall pattern of the War Club Macau. Uh, Macau means uh, fish hook in Hawaiian. For those of uh, those of you who didn't tune into my last video, um, go ahead and take a look at that if you want to see the start of this project. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just drilling in these holes, and the purpose for the holes is so that I can keep track of where I'm going to be putting in those inlays later on. Um, I shouldn't have drilled them all the way through, I should have just tapped them in a little bit. That was kind of a mistake, but it worked out. Uh, what I'm doing here though is before I get too far on the shaping, I want to go ahead and make sure that all of the rounded edges on both the inside and on the outer edges all have a good flow to them. The main reason why I'm doing this rough shaping here first before bringing down the rest of the piece is I have a lot of material to remove on those inner edges and so I, I don't want to spend time making the crisp clean lines that go on the outside that will be on the outside um, when I still have a lot of material to remove on the inside because I'll just have to remake those lines and it'll just be a lot of you know, redundant work. Um, so I had quite a bit of chisel work on this piece. Um, it actually was a little bit of back and forth. So I started it here in the beginning, and then I went through, sanded, finished shaping, um, and then at the end I went back and cleaned up one last time with the chisels. Um, I actually sh sharpened my chisels just for this project, and man was I happy I did so. <laughs> Having sharp chisels is just so nice. <laughs> Uh, I sharpened them up to, I think it was 6,000 grit, so it took me a good, I think, hour to go through and sharpen all of my chisels, but it was 100% worth it. Um, so now that I've got everything kind of in a good rough shape, now I'm going to go through and start uh, cleaning up some of the more some of the edge work as well as finishing up the sanding and shaping. Um, the barb, that's what that section is there, um, I wanted to make the connection point between that and the barb uh, more dramatic um, just so that it would stick out some more um, though because of the look of the coal wood it, it kind of hid the contrasting lines and so that was kind of unfortunate um, and so because of that I made it a little bit deeper so you can see for example from here you almost can't even see those those lines now you're looking at it from the other direction um, but it was kind of a challenge to make it really pop and and give me the aesthetic look that I wanted I probably won't be testing this piece, um, primarily because you could see that section there that was uh, dark with speckled white. Um, so there's a little bit of spalting going on there, and then there's a little bit of probably wood rot historically that was going on there. It's completely dried out now, but it's a softer wood. And so I, I am hesitant on testing this piece because of that section down by the barb. I, I just don't want to break off a chunk of the edge and have to fix that. That would just be a complete hassle. <laughs> so this section in here was kind of a pain. I wasn't able to get to it with either my chisels or um, my grinder or sander just because of the angle that it's in. And so what I ended up doing was doing a, a combination of my metal files mixed with the sandpaper. And then I would come in with a chisel just for that corner section. And with that, I was able to start to clean it up some more. As you can see, though, it's still not quite to shape, but I'm not too worried about that because what I'm going to start doing now is sanding with my 150 grit. Um, this piece is mostly sanded already, um, as in it wasn't a full rough piece, and so I don't need to start with 100. Uh, I just went straight to the 150, and I'm going to go ahead and get it to shape with the 150, and then once I get that done, I'm going to 
step up to 220 and then to 320 and I'm going to stop with 320. Uh, one, of, one of my comments in a previous video, they asked what I was talking about as I mentioned 220, 320, 420. Um, actually, I don't have any 420 grit. I had 400 grit. Uh, that's referring to the sandpaper. Um, the higher the grit number, so if you have 100 grit versus uh, 400 grit or 1000 grit, the finer it's getting. So what you do is you start with the th lower grit and work your way up to the finer grits to get a really smooth, clean finish. And so here what I'm doing is I didn't have any templates for making those dots. And they need to be perfectly uh, cylindrical or perfectly round, not cylindrical, but round, because I'm going to be using these bits to cut in the holes. And so the first thing that I did is I went and made a couple more templates. I already had a template for the smallest size I was going to be using. I didn't have templates for the remaining sizes. Um, and so I, I, I don't really have a clean way of making these templates. I did this once before and it worked out well. I just put a little bit of water on the pearl, use that bit to etch into it to draw a good line, and then take that to my grinder and sand on my grinding disc and sand it down. And so now I have my templates. I can now transfer those templates onto uh, other pieces of, of pearl and, and have good outlines that I can grind down to. Here I was just playing around with some different designs um, just to see how I wanted to place it. I ended up picking a design where it's going to go too large, too medium, um, and then two because there's four sizes, too large, two second of the large, two the smaller, and then one of the smallest. Um, not wanting to waste too much of this material, what I'm doing is I'm scoring it and then breaking it in half. Um, and that gave me, uh, I was able to draw circles on more than just that one section, otherwise I'd be wasting a lot of material. And so that's what I did here is I just transferred these template design onto those white mother of pearl blanks here. So this is just chunks of, of mother of pearl. And then I'm taking it to my disc grinder. So it's just a, a common disc grinder and then shaping it from there and then using the metal file there to kind of finish off the edge work. So there's all four that uh, is going to be used of the larger ones. And then from there, I'm going to make the rest of them. I'm going to skip most of that process. It's all the same process over and over. Um, so here's the finished uh, process with all of the remaining dots. So there's the largest, the second largest, third, and then the smallest. Now the smallest only have two dots because of the design pattern. And you'll see what I mean here. So the design pattern that I went with, you can see there uh, progressively gets smaller, but um, the smallest one only has a single dot. Um, I did that partially out of space requirements and then other because I thought it kind of looked a little bit better just to have that one dot at the end. Um, so this is what I'm using to cut in those uh, inlays. Um, so I specifically made those dots so that they would be just about a perfect fit with the associating drill bits. Um, that way I can set them in, they'll be perfectly flush, they'll look good. I'll probably have to sand them down a little bit, but not too much. Um, I did make a little bit of a mistake and I, I drilled in a little bit too deep on some of these and so I had to remove more material but that actually kind of worked out because the overall piece was still a little bit heavy and so uh, removing some of that and thinning out the section of the hook there helped a lot with that weight. So now that I have those in place now I can go about finishing the sanding and final edge work and shaping and so that's what I'm doing here. Um, I've, as you can kind of see, I've already cleaned up quite a bit and now I'm just cleaning up these edges and making the edges nice and crisp. Um, and then I'll run back over very lightly with the sand, uh, the 320 grit sandpaper to clean all of that up and really make it pop. Um, this section here was kind of unfortunate. <laughs> I did spend a decent amount of time cleaning this up and making it look really nice. Um, I knew that the lashing was going to cover it. Um, but I, I still wanted it to look nice anyway. Uh, I, you know, no, no one's going to notice it but me because it'll be hidden. <laughs> but I, I feel like some, some of those minor details that no one else sees that you take the time to finish are kind of what, uh, 
lead towards a better craftsman. I still have so much work to do and so much to learn in all of my projects, but I, I feel like that's one of them. Um, not cutting corners and just making it a good piece throughout the entire process. Uh, you can actually start to see the lines. So you can see that double line on the inside edge there. Um, there's additional lines now. You can see the lines are a lot more crisp on the outer right hand edge there where those blades kind of those those spikes come into one another I really like those crisp lines um, I thought about making the whole thing rounded and smoothed off but I think the crisp lines just look so much better um, if anyone's been watching this whole time <laughs> and listening to me talk go ahead and leave me leave a comment in the comments below if, what you think might have looked better or if you like the way it turned out so I'm gonna go ahead and oil this piece I was really excited to oil this piece um, the koa for both the lighter grain koa and the darker grain koa were just absolutely beautiful. And you can already see the character in this lighter grain koa. I mean, look at the, the waves, that 3D effect just looked absolutely awesome. So I was super excited for this point. It did take a long time to oil up the entire piece. And so I'm going to fast forward through most of this. Um, but don't worry, I'll have a, uh, I'll slow it down again once I, I finish oiling the entire piece. I did use quite a bit of excess oil on the darker koa just because of that one section that was kind of rotted. And I did that to fill in, fill in the pores. So here's the finished oiled piece. And look at that, it's just absolutely beautiful. I love the contrast between the dark koa, the mother of pearl inlay, and then the light koa, uh, koa wood, for those who don't know what the koa is that I'm talking about, just the, the species of wood that this is. Man, it's turning out awesome. So the last step that I have to do here now, um, once I let this set, I'll let this dry for probably a day, day and a half, and then come back and lash it. Uh, you can't see why the tape is on there, but uh, I did that to hold excess lashing that was kind of going out both ends. Um, once I got it to a certain point, I didn't need it anymore, and I went ahead and removed it. Um, and that's actually this point here. So that just has a pull through so that locks just that whole hand section into place. But then I have excess coming out both ends so that I can continue on the lashing as needed. So I did just a basic lashing on the handle. Now I'm doing a cross lashing on this section and then I'm gonna do a, a basic wrap on the top section. Um, and this is really just for a grip. Um, I mean, I guess if you were fishing with this, this would uh, continue on up to something that would be line onto a hook, but it's not meant to be a fishing hook. <laughs> it's meant to more, more like a Maui's fish hook, a uh, larger design. So now that I've got that wrapped up, here is the finished piece. Uh, now this is inside of my garage, so it's not in the natural light. Um, it's really bright outside. Uh, I will do a uh, show the piece outside as well, but I just wanted to show it in both lightings. But look at that, it's just absolutely beautiful. I loved how this piece turned out. Turned out absolutely gorgeous. You can see the pearl um, had a really nice snug fit, very minimal gaps. Um, overall aesthetic of this piece, I just totally love. And it feels really good in the hand. It's a little bit top heavy, but you would kind of expect that because all the weight's up top. Um, but out, other than that, it just felt awesome. I would love to test with it, but I just, that section right there, I'm a little bit nervous that it's just a little bit too brittle. Um, so this is more of a showpiece. Um, pieces like this, though, you don't really find. Um, this is more like a type of weapon you might hear about in a legend or lore. Um, for actual battle and war, the clubs that they used and, and different type of weapons that they use in Hawaii um, were a little bit more functional and uh, less decorative more designed for their purpose, and that's battle. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed this piece. I've wanted to make this piece for a really long time. This is a design that I was inspired by from another craftsman, and I was super excited to bring it to life. Uh, if you like it, go ahead and leave me a like and comment in the comments below and share it. Uh, mahalo everyone for tuned in, and uh, if you have any suggestions for anything else, let me know. I'll see you next time, and mahalo for watching.